Vibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. You're listening to the Daily Dose of Health and Wellness with Jen Reynolds. Vibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. The information contained on FibroTV.com is meant for information and entertainment purposes only. Any information via audio, video, or print material should in no way replace any advice or direction given to you from your personal physician or medical caregiver. Please consult your physician for specific treatment options. Well, hello everyone. My name is Jen Reynolds, creator and founder of FibroTV.com. On today's podcast, we are on the Daily Dose of Health and Wellness, episode number 18. And we're going to be talking about treating the mind, body, and spirit when diagnosed with a chronic illness. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the podcast. Western medicine, it sure does have its place, and it does great for acute conditions and trauma. But when it comes to chronic conditions, have we failed as a nation to treat chronic illness and the body as a whole? Live in a society where we want things done now, fixed right away, and we want it to be done the easiest way possible with the most amount of results. Unfortunately, the human body is a part of nature, and nature takes its time. So we can't just do easy fixes when it comes to chronic illness and our journey to wellness. Many chronic conditions such as fibromyalgia, lupus, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, all the arthritis, things that are continuous and that have to be managed on a regular basis, don't seem to do too well with Western medicine. In fact, we're one of the sickest nations in the world. Why is this? Is it because we're going for that quick fix? Is it because we just want to take a pill and get on with our lives because we live such busy and chaotic lifestyles? Whatever it is, we're not doing very well right now and we're getting sicker and sicker and there needs to be a shift in consciousness on how to treat the body. So what is treating the body as a whole? What is the mind-body-spirit connection? And how can we learn to integrate it into our treatment management and our journey to wellness? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Research over the last several decades demonstrates the fact that you cannot separate the mind-body-spirit in health and healing. The truth is your body was designed to be healthy. True health means that you're healthy physically, emotionally, and spiritually. When all three parts are equal and balanced, not only do you feel better, you're happier and your life is just feels so much more complete. Let's first talk about the physical body and what we need to do to balance it out. Now, everybody's going to be different when it comes to what helps them. Um, many people have done diets that have helped their chronic condition. Um, improve their nutrition, which is a win-win for anybody. If you're improving your nutrition, you're helping your body, no matter if your condition improves or not. These are things that you have to do in order to keep yourself healthy and your body to be able to manage and deal with the extra stuff that you have as a person with chronic illness. Good nutrition does not mean dieting. Dieting, I think, is a four-letter word. Um, You need a lifestyle change when it comes to nutrition and putting things into your body that support the body. Things that support the body are whole foods. These are foods that have not been chemically altered. They have not been processed. Um, They're basically on the outside aisles of the grocery store. 
So all of those um, processed foods that are in the middle aisles that have names that you can't pronounce are not good for your body. I think part of the problem with the body becoming ill is losing our connection with food. Not even 80 years ago, we had such a better connection to our food. We grew a lot of our own food. We knew our farmers. Um, We didn't just run into a grocery store and grab things off of a shelf that was all packaged pretty and beautifully and ready for you to go. Before that food gets into that packaging or on the shelf, it goes through so much processing that our bodies are getting overwhelmed with chemicals, GMOs, and pesticides. So it's very scary, our food system right now, and we do need to reconnect with our food. And if you can't grow a garden, at least get to know your farmer and know where your food is coming from. This is such an important task when you're trying to heal the body. One great way to get to know your local farmers is to go to a farmer's market. Talk to the people selling the food. A lot of times it's the farmers themselves or it's somebody that's closely related to the farmer that it can explain to you their practices and how they sustain their food. And you want it to be the least amount of pesticides. Um, organic is the best. There are people that do sell food that is not that are not organic and that actually don't have pesticides on them. They just don't want to go through the whole government regulation to get the organic seal. It's actually, there's tons of fees with that. And um, a lot of people are are stepping away from that and doing the practice themselves without the actual label. So it's going to be a lot cheaper for you because their production is going to be cheaper and they'll be able to pass over the food over to you at a lower rate. So farmers markets are excellent. Also, we need to get tons and tons of water. Water is detoxifying to the body. These sodas that we're drinking, these sugary drinks, um, the energy boosters, they are just a big, 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 big no-no. If you need a little bit of caffeine, tea is probably the best or maybe a half a cup of organic coffee. But constantly trying to stimulate your body when it's tired is not very productive. You're just going to end up being more tired and having rebound type of... um, chronic fatigue or exhaustion from over caffeinating your body. So tons of water, lemon water is excellent. Um, Teas without sugars are also excellent. They also support the body and have antioxidants in them that help keep you healthy. Also, the physical body needs sunshine. It needs to go outside. It It needs to have exercise. Exercise can be a little bit tricky when you do have a chronic illness. A lot of times we pay the next day when we exercise and so that keeps a lot of us from actually exercising. Um, A way to avoid that is to actually start out very, very slowly. Do not compare your progress with somebody that is healthy. That is just completely ridiculous that people do that. When I first started exercising, I was bed bound. Basically, I was in bed all the time. And I started out by just doing some stretches in my bed. And then I progressed walking to the mailbox. And then I progressed walking up the street. And then I progressed getting into a pool and doing aqua therapy with um, physical therapy. So it is a very slow process, but it is so important not to sit around and lay around all day. Our bodies are not designed to do that. And when we continue to do that, they will become sicker and sicker. There's actually some research that suggests that people that sit for more than a certain amount of hours a day, I believe it's like more than five hours a day, six hours a day, actually lose 10 years off of their life. Um, I read this in a study a few months ago. It actually kills the body. So we got to move, whether it just be moving our legs, stretching, but move the body. It is so important for that physical body to get some sort of movement, blood flow, the exercise, you know, get that body moving and the energy flowing through your body. A lot of us also tend to forget that our skin is our largest organ. And when we put things on our skin, it gets absorbed into our system like a huge sponge. If you're using lotions or makeup or 
body sprays that are full of chemicals. They're going straight into your body. And, you know, I didn't think about this a lot when I was first um, changing my diet. And I figured out that a lot of the products that I were using were actually very toxic to my body. And they were actually reducing reducing my speed for, you know, my journey to health and wellness. I was putting on makeup that had tons of chemicals, hairspray, my deodorant had tons of chemicals, had aluminum in it. Um, My toothpaste had fluoride in it. These are all things that are very, very toxic to the body and we should not be putting on our bodies in order for our bodies to start to heal. Let's talk about the mind part of the trinity, mind, body, and spirit. The mind can be our greatest asset in healing, or it can be the greatest demise of our health. The mind and body are so intertwined, and we have left this out of medicine, Western medicine, and I believe this is the reason why um, we have seen such an increase of chronic conditions. And of course, the physical body and Good nutrition is very, very important, but your mindset, your attitude, and your beliefs all play a part on your journey to wellness and how you feel every single day. And it is so important that you learn to work with your mind and your body together. Now, this does not mean that you can think your way out of your illness. I'm not even saying that, but our Our mind is very connected to our body and they are learning now through epigenetics that your body listens to everything that your mind is saying. Every cell in your body responds to what you're thinking. And for us to ignore this is actually neglecting the body as a whole. Quantum physics states that like attracts like. And um, this is one of the universal laws. So if you're constantly thinking negatively and have a lot of negative self-talk or holding on to emotions from the past, it affects you physically in a major way. Um, It's not the only cause of illness, but it can be the cause of illness for some. Sometimes this happens with abuse when we hold on to anger and resentment from the past. When you hold on to emotions inside your body, it will manifest into dis-ease. You notice how disease is spelled D-I-S-E-A-S-E. That means that there is dis-ease in the body. This does not mean that you caused your illness. I think a lot of people don't explore the mind part of a disease because they feel a sense of it being their fault um, and they don't want to take that personal responsibility with dealing with past issues, um, it does not mean that your disease is your fault or that it's not real. It means that you're neglecting an area that can actually improve your health. That's all you're doing by not dealing with the mind. Um, I have a whole podcast about um, forgiveness and anger and resentment at FibroTV.com that you can listen to to get more into detail about releasing um, past anger and resentment and and forgiveness and how it's the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. It has nothing to do with the other person. It is a gift to yourself to forgive and let go of something that no longer serves you and no longer can affect you anymore unless you make a choice to personally hold on to that and it will continue to be destructive in your journey to wellness. So it's something that you don't want to take lightly. It's something that you need to work through with either um, yourself, with meditation, or with a professional to talk through it. One way to support the mind is to live in the moment, to stop focusing on the past and thinking about the future. The past, we have things that, you know, emotionally can upset us or, you know, those kinds of things that we just talked about that can cause a problem. Also, if you're thinking of the future, you're usually worrying about something that hasn't even happened and you're assuming something bad is going to happen. When you're in the moment, you're focused on what's going on now and dealing with your emotions in the moment. 
One way to learn how to live in the present moment is through mindfulness meditation. A simple meditation that I do, mindfulness meditation I do in the shower actually helps me remember to stay in the moment. When I'm in the shower, I let the water fall on me. I listen to the sounds, how it feels when the water's dripping down my body. And I focus on how I feel in all the senses, my hearing, my sight, my touch, all of that stuff really, really matters. How I'm feeling emotionally. Just being in that present moment and not letting your mind race to the future or from the or going to the past is one way to keep a healthy mind. I can talk about the mind for hours and hours, but I don't want to keep this podcast super, super long. But I'm going to talk about one more thing about the placebo effect. And this is something that can actually prove that the mind is very, very powerful. The placebo effect is when the mind believes something's going to happen and it makes it happen. And this can happen in a medical setting. Um, There have been doctors that have done studies on the placebo effect with people coming in and them giving them a sugar pill and them getting better or doing surgeries or people believe they're going to have a surgery. And there was one study where they did um, a knee surgery on several people. They acted like they're going to do the knee surgery. They actually wheeled them into the room, put them to sleep. The doctor played with the instruments because, you know, you don't know if people are conscious on a different level when they're asleep on these medications. They move things around. They, they acted like they were doing the surgery, never did the surgery. And every single person that had this knee procedure that never had the surgery got better. And they did absolutely nothing to their knee. So that right there proves that the mind is very, very powerful and that your beliefs play a powerful role in how you feel. So um, this is why it's so important to focus on health, wellness, well-being, positive thinking, um, positive emotions, gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most highest form of prayer energy that you could possibly have in your life. Just being grateful for the things that you have instead of focusing on the things that you are lacking in your life can bring you so much abundance, happiness, and even improve your health. Now let's talk about the spirit a little bit. A lot of times people get the spirit or the soul um, confused with religion or um, things of that nature. And um, the spirit really has nothing to do with religion, but can be used in correlation with religion. Um, The spirit is the self. It is the soul. It is who you are as a person without all of these um, facades that we have in our physical body. We get up every day, we put makeup on and we do our hair and we look all pretty and we do it to impress others, which is not bad. It, it feels good to feel good about yourself and to look good. And it, it, it actually improves you emotionally when you feel better about yourself. But the spirit is very raw and it's who you are as a person authentically without all these covers, without all these facades. And um, it's something that is a very unique journey that nobody can do for you. Nobody can tell you how to do it. It's something that you've got to do for yourself. And the one way that you can get in touch with your spirit and find out who that authentic self is, is to be quiet, to be still, to meditate. In our society, we um, have televisions, we have these digital devices, video games, computers, and we don't sit still and we don't listen to our bodies. We don't listen to our raw, authentic self. And without doing that, it can get very confusing to who we really are because society is telling us who to be and who we are is completely separate from what people are trying to tell us to be. We all were born with a purpose and that purpose sometimes isn't in alignment with what other people's expectations are. Your purpose is very special, very unique, and it is a gift that has been given to you to use to help others. And once we find that purpose and take away all of the naysayers that say, oh, you can't, 
you can't do that. That That's not going to make enough money or you're living in a fantasy or you hear all of these things like, you know, there's kids that say, you know what, I want to be a singer when I get older. And people tell them, you know what, you can't be a singer. You can't be an actor. Only a few percentage of people are able to do that. And they're told that and they believe that. And then they don't follow their special gift. And, you know, there's tons of other things you can do besides singing and acting. I'm just using this as an example, but you don't have to be famous to sing and act. There's other things that you can do to follow that passion or follow any passion that you have. Photography, uh, it doesn't have to be art. It could be just helping people or helping people on their journey to health and wellness, which is what I like to do. For, For me, that is my passion, is helping others to get as healthy as possible when they have a chronic illness. And following that passion, that fire within you, ignites that spirit and ignites that authentic self. And when we repress that, it does cause confusion for the body and dis-ease. Like I said earlier, dis-ease, E-A-S-E, dis-ease in the body. So to find out what our purpose is, who we are truly and authentically, that is the spirit. And it is so important to just cradle your spirit, to embrace your spirit, and to learn who you are and to take that time because you deserve it to learn who you are raw and authentically without any facades or people trying to tell you who you are. So uh, that will conclude my podcast for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, This came off the fly. I didn't, you know, read anything off the internet or anything. These are just my little thoughts. My little, I call them my little blonde thoughts. And it's very, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. There's so much more to explore with the mind, body, spirit connection. And you could do that by uh, just getting on Google and learning as much as you can about it and how to pull all three of these things together to treat the body as a whole so that you can be on your journey to health, wellness, and happiness because everybody deserves that. So um, I would like to bid you farewell and thank you for listening to today's podcast. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week and a beautiful weekend. And I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this podcast. And please remember, you can find us on Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com forward slash fibro TV. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash fibro TV. You can find us over at Google Plus. Just type in uh, fibro TV on Google Plus. We're on there as well. And of course, our main website is www.fibrotv.com. And I'd like to thank you again for listening. And until next time. Thank you for listening to The Daily Dose of Health and Wellness. The Daily Dose of Health and Wellness is written, produced, and edited by Jen Reynolds and released every Thursday, right here at FibroTV.com. My mommy is sick, but she's the best mommy in the entire world, and I just want her to get better. Fibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. You can find us over at www.fibrotv.com.